Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the webinar Discover M Schools and Join the Competition. This webinar is co organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, and GSMA, and it is a part of the Back to School Campaign 2022. My name is Ivana Kovac, and I'm coordinating European SchoolNet STEM Alliance. Every year, the STEM Alliance organizes the Back to School Campaign, and we are trying to inspire young people to pursue STEM careers and STEM subjects, nurturing a capable and innovative workforce in Europe. And this time, apart from many webinars where we will discuss the jobs of the future and also offer new perspectives on the STEM careers, we are organizing STEM Alliance GSMA competition, M Schools Challenge. Together with us today in the room, we have my colleagues, Rocio Benito and Chanel Martinez, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. In case you have any issues with audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send them a message in the chat. Then we are going to our next slide, agenda. Well, we'll start with the presentation on GSMA and M schools. After that, we will move on to the introduction of the STEM Alliance GSMA competition, and we will talk about M schools challenge and the modules involved. And finally, you will be able to ask questions to the speakers throughout this webinar, and we will address them later in the Q&A session. Do not be shy, share your questions and thoughts with us, and we will address them later. And now let's see what's really important for today. Uh, before we go to the slides and present our speakers for today, let's just not forget to uh, sign the participation list. This is important because this is the only way to prove this webinar really happened, and this is also the only way for you to get a certificate of participation. And let's see who are our speakers today. It's my great pleasure today to welcome our speakers, Albert Forn and Bea Cordero. Albert leads the M Schools program funded by GSMA. M Schools is a public-private partnership between government and industry, and it is delivering a groundbreaking and internationally acclaimed mobile education program. M Schools has a great impact on the community of students and educators and over 2,500 schools that participate. And Bea Cordero, our second speaker for this evening, works on creativity and educational projects in Edoscopy, company focused on science communication, education, and outreach. Bea has also collaborated in the creation of M Schools M STEAM modules. Albert Bea, thank you so much for being with us today, presenting and discussing. And now let's start with Albert Forn. Albert, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you to uh, Scientix and, uh, and the STEM Alliance um, for all this uh, great work that you guys are doing and uh, for uh, having us here today to, to with this webinar and with the challenge, which is so exciting to us. Um, I also would like to thank Bea, who will be speaking after me, and Eduskopi, the organization which she works for, who are fantastic partners in, in our MSTEAM initiative and have helped us uh, to no end. Um, to be able to produce all these materials and content and, and be so successful in our initiatives in schools. Uh, and of course, obviously from GSMA's behalf, I also want to thank everyone who's joined today and give a warm welcome to all the teachers who are here. And I think that um, as Ivana has said, please, uh, please ask us questions and interact with us in this presentation because I think it's very interesting for us to be able to do so and to also to do things which are more useful to you and therefore dialogue will be very, very important for us all. Um, I just want to start, and I'll be very brief, but I did want to give you a bit of context as to um, what GSMA is. Some of you may not know, but we are the membership uh, alliance of the mobile industry. Um, so basically all mobile operators and many other companies in the ecosystem are members of GSMA. And yeah. our intent really is to try to use the mobile industry as a way to improve uh, society and be able to do things which are more ref more um, uh, relevant to, to people and to into different communities. Um, so what we tried to do really is to try to bring together the, the, the different members and the whole community around the mobile sector um, to think about what things can be useful to society and how we can help it thrive. Some of the things we do that you may be aware of um, are different events such as Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, which brings together uh, hundreds of thousands of people in, in different from different countries to discuss about what mobile can do and how to, how to improve uh, the future. 
Um, but I think that really one of our main goals, and as you'll see in the next slides that we have upcoming, uh, is to try to um, find ways where we can um, you really unite all the different players into different areas that that have impact and can change. And one of the reasons and one of the things that we did to do this and we were very stressful on um, initially was the the, the SDGs, uh, the sustainability goals by the United Nations. And in fact, we were the first industry to sign up to these goals and to these objectives. And we've been very, very uh, vocal on trying to make these uh, an integral part of the, of the business and the systems of the mobile operators. Uh, with a lot of activity in education and gender equality and climate change and all these things which are so important to society today. We know that hundreds of millions of lives have already been impacted by this effort, so we're very, very happy with that. Um, and um, really to go a little bit further than that, um, just to give you our vision, is how can we unlock the full power of connectivity so that people, industry, and society can thrive? And this is really the, the, the key factor of what we do. Now, um, if we move on to M schools, which is, uh, as, as Ivana said, is a program that is funded by GSMA um, and is a public private partnership. It's really something that we set up in around the year 2012 as part of our activity around uh, Barcelona and Catalonia and Spain and the Mobile Congress there. Um, but it was a need that was presented to us from the Ministry of Education saying, guys, we do have a lot of issues here that we need to solve in the education sector. How could you help us do this? And we set up a, a program that was um, co-sponsored and, and, and co-defined with the local institutions such as the Ministry of Education and of the Generalitat de Catalunya and the Barcelona City Hall, uh, in which we developed a whole number of different initiatives, content platforms, methodologies that were then used um, in schools to, uh, to try to improve what is now called mobile learning, but at that moment in time was really um, just how to transform the sector into you know, education into a more useful activity with mobile devices. Um, and what happened is that we developed a whole bunch of different activities. And one of the things that, that really came up, standed out to us was the fact that there was very little activity around technology and science in the classrooms at that point in time. And um, we found that there were many different um, players in the industry or in the research and the science uh, sectors that came to us and said, we have ideas. Could we take this to the classroom somehow? Um, so when we saw this demand, what we decided was that we'd put together this initiative that we now call MSTEAM, um, that was uh, developed jointly with Eduscopi, uh, and in which we worked with the science research and research centers and asked them what was the cutting edge, what was the novel science activities that they were working on, and how could we take them to the classroom? And we brainstormed with a lot of them to create specific content around those uh, cutting edge science activities and, and different research things that were happening in the region and in other places as well to be able to produce uh, activities for the classroom so the boys and girls of different ages could actually see these activities, learn from them, and participate in this science in different ways. And all of this taking a huge advantage of the fact that you know mobile devices are today um, uh, very powerful scientific devices that can do many different things, take many different measurements. So this is where MSTEAM was born. Uh, so there's different uh, different um, ideas that came from all the research centers and from all the scientists in the region to how we could connect mobile technologies and the different uh, science that is already mobile devices to actually bring them to the classroom and run the, run activities in the classroom so the boys and girls could experience the scientific process and inquiry and benefit from that. Um, after all this, uh, you know, after a long time of doing this, we've finally, you know, settled on a whole different bunch of pieces of content that are now in our MSTEAM library are available, available online and uh, free of uh, charge. You can download them just by registering. Um, but obviously, this was really tailored to a more local community uh, in Spain. So our intent now really is to try to get these modules up to speed for a different public, for more a more international public, and for different needs and requirements in different regions. So then, when we brought this idea to um, to uh, to European School and to the STEM Alliance and and to Scientix, they said, "Absolutely, you guys have to run a challenge." Um, and with the challenge, we're able to see what happens. So really, this is the intent. The intent is for us now to take these modules which are uh, very very well respected, very well used in, in, in Spain and in different classrooms and different schools and see how they can fit into different environments and, and grow and make them better. So this is really the intent of, of the challenge and Bea will speak more about this, but I thought it was interesting that we should at least touch on it quickly. So I won't um, take much longer. I will hand off to, uh, to the next speaker which, uh, and then we'll be able to explain a little bit more. Um, but yeah, uh, Thank you very much for everyone who's here and I uh, hope to hear you in the comments. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Albert, for introducing the M schools and all the great things that M schools is involved in. And uh, as Albert just mentioned, we are starting a challenge. It, it has been launched. You can already go to our website and find out more details about it. But to tell you just briefly, the goal of this competition is actually for you to create a classroom project which will be in the form of the PowerPoint presentation, and it will demonstrate students' critical thinking and problem-solving skills in addressing the tasks in the selected modules. And these are the steps that we will have to follow. So let's go through the steps. There are several steps, and uh, it all starts with the registration at the M Schools webpage. Bea Cordero will, in just a second from now, tell us more about the first four steps, where she will explain to you how to register how to download, how to explore the modules, and she will also tell you something about the module objectives. She will also uh, give us some examples of uh, suggested procedures that you can use while implementing these modules in your classrooms. And after that, I will uh, lead you through the PowerPoint template and discuss the final four steps of the M Schools Challenge. Bea, where and how should interested teachers uh, start when they want to apply for this competition? I will just recommend to download the modules like we're going to we're going to explore right now, look through them and just open their minds and be as creative as they dare to be, uh, because what we are asking them to do, as I will explain further, is to improve the modules, to work on the modules and uh, find new activities that they could add uh, to them and and yeah, basically uh, just improve the modules. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Bea will start with uh, uh, telling you how to download them and she will explain you what kind of information is needed from you uh, while registering for this. Bea? Great. Thank you, Ivana. And and I would also like to thank you, Albert and Vasili, who is uh, there in the background uh, from GSMA and M Schools for the confidence that they show in us. Uh, letting us work with them uh, right from the beginning in this project. And so, yeah, I'll move uh, to the modules that we will discuss today. And the first thing I want to explain to you is how uh, where you can find these modules. Um, you will find a link uh, in the registration page from uh, STEAM Alliance, if I'm not wrong, that will lead you to the M Schools uh, Challenge Landing web page. Uh, it looks like this, um, what you see here on screen. Uh, but you will see here it says register here. You just have to click here and then you will see this uh, window appearing at the at the right at the at the right uh, in the PowerPoint uh, where they will ask you will be asked to add some personal information, just an email, uh, the country where you're from and your name. And then as you click and register now, you will receive an email uh, with a link where you can you will be able uh, to download the modules. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm in control of the PowerPoint. I don't know if you can help me. Um, yes, I will. I will move the slides for you there. No OK, <laughs> OK, OK, then uh, this is uh, here on the left. This is the, the email that you're going to receive. And these are the this, these two buttons are just the links that will help you uh, download the two PDFs and this is uh, the way the, the modules will look. The, um, this is the first page of each one. And uh, in order to develop these modules, uh, the longer ones, uh, we worked with uh, a research center and um, an outreach project. Uh, first, uh, the art detectives, the one on the left, it, we worked with Nanoeduca. It's a uh, uh, um, a project that uh, aims to bring nanoscience into classrooms. And uh, for the other one, MicroArt, uh, we work with the uh, CR8, CRG. Uh, it's a biomedical and genomics research center here in Barcelona. OK, thank you. You can go to the next slide. So um, from now on, I'm going to speak only uh, about the adapted modules, the ones with the four sessions, the, the ones that you're going to work with, uh, and they share the same structure. You, you will begin finding an introduction, uh, speaking about the contest and uh, M Schools project and the M Steel, uh, M Simple library. Uh, then you will find a little bit of information about the module itself that includes the objectives. Uh, you will find objectives for each module. 
Then uh, you will find the four sessions and each session begins with a summary, then a suggested activity procedure. And I will explain a little bit more what that means, the suggested activity procedure. Then some, you will also find tips and suggestions. Uh, the last session, the fourth session, will always speak about the final project. Um, and we, you will see that we, we, we give you the aim, what should be the aims of the project and some ideas. And in each module, you will also find some annexes that will contain materials that you can use with your students, if you like, and also some proposed tools that you can use to, uh, to implement the, the modules with your class. Thank you. We can go to the next one. And this is, uh, I wanted to show you how the modules look like. They are, they're um, very nice, as you can see. Uh, this is for session one. And as like I was saying, uh, first you will find the summary. It is a very short summary of what you will do in this session. And here we see the suggested activity procedure. And we called it this way because this is our proposal and the proposal that we want you to work with. This means uh, that you can change it. Uh, in every in every session ends with this uh, highlighted rectangle here, and in this rectangle we always encourage you to find creative ways uh, to change and to improve the session. Uh, this is what we will expect you to write in the PowerPoint. Um, and you can also add if you've created new materials, you can explain us uh, what you've done and new ideas if maybe you've changed the dynamics that we propose in the in the session anything uh you change is uh, th that's the important thing that that we want to know so if we could move to the next one so um like i was saying um we we've adapted two modules the first one is art detectives and the second one is micro art i will uh, start speaking about uh first about art detectives if you can move my slide. So what's the aim of this module? We want uh, your students to reflect, to reflect uh, on this question. What line separates art from vandalism? Um, we also, apart, we want them to uh, discuss uh, what is art, what's not art, where should we find art? Should we find it in all public spaces, maybe just in some specific public spaces? And if there's art on our streets, do we value this art? Could we do something to um, let our neighbors enjoy more of this art, make it more visible, even though it's in the street, maybe nobody is paying attention to this art. Uh, how can we find, um, how can we create a project that um, help us enhance these expressions in our urban landscapes? Uh, can you pass my slide? Thank you. So these are the objectives for this module. Like I was saying, uh, we want the classroom to reflect on the limits of art in public spaces. Um, we want them to create criteria and a classification uh, by analyzing graffiti and marks that they will find in their surroundings of their school. We also want to use this um, this investigation uh, to create a digital map that reflects uh, the street art that they found. Um, by doing that, by taking photos and using using their mobile phones to take them, they will be able to extract coordinates from their photos. That's the way they're going to be able to upload them in a digital map and to locate them and create this map. Uh, we also want them to um, uh, take uh, this opportunity to reflect on, on the risk of sharing photos on social media um, by analyzing uh, the settings on their mobile phones. We will go uh, deeper on that uh, in a moment. And finally, they're, since they're going to create a, a final project, um, in this project we want them to try to find creative ways to present uh, the revalued street art, the art that they, they have found in the, on the streets. And if possible, we want them to impact uh, on their community. Okay. So, session one, uh, that's, that's the day that you put the questions to your class and uh, you ask them to create this criteria of what they think it's art, what they think uh, it's not art, where should we find art. Uh, you can uh, make a little bit of role play and ask them to put their shoes, uh, put the shoes of a city council and decide 
what should we eliminate from schools and what should uh, stay and be valorized as art. Okay, can we? Okay, then the second session uh, called Art Detectives uh, um, is where we ask them to create the digital map. Um, you can assign them areas of study uh, and show them how to uh, geolocate the photos. This is all explained. Uh, there are tutorials in the in the um, in the modules, uh, and um, there is even a tutorial. Uh, on uh, where can you find or change settings uh, to make sure that you're not sharing uh, your geolocation when you uh, upload photos on social media, for example. And you will also find, um, uh, because uh, we were presented with the challenge uh, of that maybe not all of you would be allowed to go out during school hours, so we gave you three options. Uh, you can just organize an expedition during school hours, or you can ask the students uh, just to to tell you where their ways back and forth from school, and then uh, organize some routes that they can study. And finally, if none of these options is possible, you can also do this, this research by uh, Google Street Map, Google Street View. Um, can we go to the next one? Okay. So what's the next thing that you can do? They can do, they can upload, uh, take these photos, go, go take these photos on the street with their mobiles and uh, always remind them that uh, images must not show recognizable people. And there's not really any necessity of them uh, showing any people. So we could, you could just tell them that they have to make sure that nobody is in their photos. Uh, and uh, make sure you upload all the photos in a in a shared storage uh, space so you can come back to them afterwards. Can we go to the next one? So uh, the third session is the session where they analyze the photos that they have taken, all the graffitis, all the marks, all the murals, and 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 this what you're seeing here is a uh, is one of the annexes that we propose that you can use uh, that divides uh, what we usually call graffitis into murals, graffiti, and messages because even uh, in the graffiti art culture they make difference between. Uh, what they consider art or what kinds of art, graffiti art there exist. Uh, they can decide uh, and make comments about the photos they've taken and decide which ones should they consider art or maybe they found this graffiti or mural in a place where it shouldn't be uh, or maybe they just discover a wall that is ideal just to write, uh, just to do a mural there they can uh, share all these, all these ideas with each other. And I think we're going now to the uh, fourth session that is about the um, final project. And with all the images that they've collected and, uh, and after the debate, uh, they can uh, find ways uh, to revalue the street art that they found. Um, and also uh, to uh, build up a project that may have a positive impact in the community. In the in the modules, you will find ideas of what they could do. You can take choose one of the these ideas or cho choose an idea and then improve this idea or just think of a new idea together with your class. Why not? Uh, but uh, the objective should be to showcase the, the photos, uh, revalorize this art and uh, have a positive impact in your community and your school. So I think we can go now uh, to the the second module, which is micro art. And uh, in this second module, um, uh, we want you to explore um, uh, to transform your mobile. They will be always using their mobiles uh, into a microscope. And uh, the final goal is to discover the beauty hidden uh, um, on the other side of the microscope. Uh, we want them to capture these images that usually we only see them when we look through the microscopes and we want them to stay and we want to create also a, a work of art from these images. Uh, the image that is uh, shown here is uh, actually by an artist, a Catalan artist, and she worked with images from researchers from a biomedical research center here, here in Barcelona. And she created this beautiful work of art. Uh, can we go to the next slide? The objectives uh, for this uh, for this module are to build a, a microscope um, from a mobile phone and and then use it to 
to observe microorganisms, material cells. Um, depending, you will see that depending on the um, microscope that you build, you will be able to observe one thing or the other, depending on the resolution that you achieve. Uh, and then uh, uh, the second objective would be to create a collective work of art uh, based on the studied samples. And um, just note that we also ask that they not only uh, showcase the images, but they tag the images, that they uh, uh, explain what the images are um, to make the, the work of art more informative for, for the future uh, expectators. Uh, and uh, also one of the goals that we propose here is to find creative ways to showcase the, their work again to the school community. Can we go to the next one? So uh, we also start with some initial questions like uh, in the past module, uh, but this time we want them to reflect on the limits of the human eye. Uh, what's the smallest thing that we can see, for example, and uh, what tools and what technologies we've created to enhance our view and um, OK, you know, I, I just wanted to to add that uh, the image that, that I've put here is a, is actually a, um, one of the an image of an interactive resource. Uh, one of the resources that we recommend uh, to use in the in the modules that is very useful to explore the limits of our eye, the limits of the of the tools that we use to enhance our vision, like my visual microscope, electronic microscope. So it's a very interesting uh, tool. Thank you. I can. So um, in the next session, it, that, that's the session where, where, you, where, where we propose that you build a smartphone with your students. A smartphone uh, should transform into a microscope with the ability to focus on small samples. And like we say here, depending on the microscope that you assemble, the students will be able to see microorganisms and materials or cells. If we can go to the next slide, we will give you in the annexes, you will find a, a vast list of materials uh, that you can in, um, that you can check in order to find the, the microscope stand that better suits your, your needs. Uh, you will find many options of different levels of difficulty, different levels of budgets. You just have to choose the one that you that suits you the best and just know that for this competition, we won't take into account the time of stand you choose to build with your classroom. What will we uh, will assess is how the improvements that you make to the to the module. Um, so, oh, a last one just appeared. Then <laughs> we we I just put here uh, three possible examples, but uh, the list. Uh, I mean, you will find more than ten or twenty options that you can choose from. If we can go to the next one, so. Um, once you have the you build the microscope, it's time to choose the samples that you're going to that you're going to study. Uh, you can prepare them before uh, starting the work with the students or you can include the students in the process and maybe uh, choose together which samples you're going to study. But just be aware that some samples need some pre specific preparations. And there's another annex in the um, in the modules uh, that gives you uh, some links with uh, preparation techniques for different kinds of samples. So just be aware that a sample may need a, a specific uh, preparation. Then um, you just have to photograph the, the samples and label the samples. Uh, we also, um, it will be a good opportunity here to for you to correct uh, the work of your students to make sure that uh, everything is correct and then print uh, the, the, the photos. But then again, print the photos is just a, a suggestion from us. And so the final uh, session for this project is also the final project uh, where we uh, propose that you create with, the stu with your students a collective work of art that shows nature's beauty, the samples that they've observed and that they find creative ways to uh, showcase uh, their samples. And uh, again, uh, we, ask the, we ask you to find ways uh, to showcase the, this work, your students' work with your community, your school, their families, whatever impacts uh, their environment. And, and uh, we also added here that you can use, uh, you can, uh, 
alter the images uh, in an artistic way uh, uh, by using editing programs. But we wanted to add that you can also uh, use handicraft techniques. We, you don't uh, really only need to, to use uh, image editing problems, uh, programs. So I think, yeah, that's the, the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Beth, for leading us through the modules in details and showing us the procedures the teachers can follow, but they can also be free to adapt and to make that more more uh, aligned with what they have in the classrooms and with their students. And now let me tell you more about the final steps uh, when it comes to procedures that we need to follow in order to prepare the final uh, project. So. Yeah, after you have re carefully read the teacher's guides that I just uh, mentioned and you have implemented the modules into your class classrooms, it is time for you to submit the it to, to the competition. And let's see how to do that. There is a two step process. First of all, you will need to fill in the PowerPoint presentation template. You can find this template on the STEM Alliance website or you can click on this slide. And we will also share this link in the chat box in a minute. And on each of the slides, there is a mandatory question that requires your feedback. For example, you will be asked to, on slide one, for example, to list main steps that you have followed in integration of this module, and also to explain how does that complement the goals that you have set for your classroom for this semester. You will also be asked to list the changes you have implemented while going through the sessions. So all the changes you have done, all the modifications and to list any new materials that you might have used or new resources. Please just note that for all the steps or all the adaptations and in all, all your answers, you should not be using more than the total of 180 words. Um, then we will go to the Next next step, which uh, would require from you to uh, tell us more, more about the final project you have created. Did you maybe showcase it in the on the school premises somewhere else in your community, in the city hall or on the streets of your town or village? Or did you maybe uh, involve some of your co-workers here? You can tell us briefly about that and you can also attach the image that represents your final project as Bea has shown us uh, shown us in in her last slides. Also, we are interested uh, in learning what are the outcomes of your activities and what competencies did your students develop. Then again, we are also interested very much in your opinion to hear how can we improve the modules. Do you have some ideas? Do you have some thoughts? After going through the modules carefully, after implementing them in your classroom, we would be happy to hear about that. And you will have this slide in the presentation, in the PowerPoint presentation for that. You will also see that we have prepared some guidelines for you where you have details on the steps needed. And this is just a, as a reminder for you, do not more do not use more than 180 words per slide when you're adding your answers if you do wish to add something else some new information a tip for us a comment or additional activity you have implemented please use the annex and that is something that you can find on the final slides please note that adding material and information in the annex is completely optional so we will not take that into consideration while selecting the best uh, the best submission and the winner but we would again appreciate your your feedback uh, then i would also like to tell you more about the next step as i mentioned this is a two-step process when you want to submit first of all and when your powerpoint presentation is ready you can go and upload it in the submission form where you will also provide some general information like your name last name country and so on the submission form can be find uh, can be found on the STEM Alliance GSMA competition web page, and in the terms and conditions for this competition. I believe it was shared uh, in the chat already. And then, also do not forget that you can make up to two submissions, so you can decide to work on both modules, and 
please, when, uh, when attaching any uh, documents, additional material or images, make sure you're uh, obeying the GDPR rules and that everything is aligned with that. And you can read more about it and find really, really useful images uh, explaining what are the images acceptable and which ones are not, especially when it comes to images with children in our terms and conditions. And then the last but not the least, uh, you need to spread the word. Tell, tell the world that you're part of this competition. Uh, use uh, tag STEM Alliance back to school campaign and M schools in all your social media and tell the world about this. And then the last step is again your prize, not the last, but really important one because M schools uh, want you to decide on the type of professional development you need. So the winner, the winners, actually we will have four winners uh, in this competition, will win a voucher for 500 euros for the pro professional development. You can decide on the type of the development you need and you can do it in your native countries. And now just before going to a Q&A session, I would just like to remind you one more time to please sign the signature list because this is the only way to get a certificate for this webinar. And now uh, let's go to questions from the audience. Let me just see what we have received. OK, we have received a question from Maria de, uh, de Rosario asking uh, if this is for primary school students. The answer is yes. I believe that uh, Albert has already addressed this uh, in, in the chat, but this is actually uh, addressed to students from 9 to 14 years old. For the purposes of the competition, we have divided this into two groups, so you can submit the, your entries for the students from 9 to 11 year, years old and also from 12 to 14. Uh, then we have received another question from Magali Foret. Uh, who says that um, they used to be an elementary uh, school teacher and now they work in Belgium for the company and they would like to promote it uh, among the teachers. Yes, of course, feel free to promote the competition between your in your communities and share, share the spread the word, as we said, because it's really important that teachers know about this because it's a really unique opportunity that you can decide on your the type of uh, professional development that you need. And again, we, apart from that, you get the chance to be a really part of something really important and really interesting because not always do you get such interesting projects with your students. Uh, there is another question uh, for Bea, uh, and it is um, how did you initially create the modules and did you collaborate with any other teachers or educators? Bea, can you tell us something about the background of the modules? Uh, well, I think uh, Albert even uh, explained um, uh, a little bit about it. We worked with the with the research centers. Uh, we worked uh, with the communications team, but also with the scientists and all the modules were revised by uh, the final revisions by the scientists to make sure that accuracy was was um, was correct. And uh, and I think um, maybe Albert can can explain a little bit about this because uh, I think he knows more about that. You did uh, focus groups with with teachers, I think. Uh, yeah, that's the modules. correct. Yeah, it's correct. Bea. We did um, a number of focus groups with, the, with different teachers who were implementing or intending to implement these modules in the classroom. Um, uh, and that gave us some very, very valuable feedback as to how these teachers were intending to use it. Um, and it allowed us to to modify the modules uh, in accordance to, to their feedback. Um, and I think it's also very important to note that um, the modules presented today, as, as you commented, Bea, are uh, really reduced versions of the modules and other materials that we already have available. Um, but it's important to note that all of these modules have a very strong scientific component, a scientific background that really um, was important to us because we wanted to make sure that we were bringing this cutting edge science to the classroom in a way that that motivated and, and, and was interesting to the kids participating, not only the teachers. So I think that's really a, a very relevant thing that um, it's not only something that teachers will enjoy, but also it's something that's very motivating for the children who can understand that what they're doing is really related to 
uh, things that are maybe even on the news or very visible in their communities. Exactly, and Albert, if I may ask, can you tell us were there only STEM teachers involved in your focus group and in the feedback you received, or was it more of a steam it and all all uh, all subjects uh, involved? Yeah, it was a happy mix. Um, <clears throat> so I, I mean, as, you, as as you've seen, the modules that we've presented to you today um, have they they both have an art focus. Um, they both have um, a very strong component about the visuals. Um, and and um, and what they make, how they make you feel, and how they make the community feel. So there's a lot of um, interesting things about emotions and moods and art, and, and it's all mixed into these modules. Um, so we had a lot of teachers participating from this perspective as well, from from the art department, from the history department, from other areas that gave us feedback as to how we could really, you know, again motivate the kids to participate in a way that that resonated with them and made them feel invested and 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 emotionally participating in, in, in this in this initiative. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of teachers from different um, fields that helped us with this, and that I think really enriched the, the end result and, and made it uh, very, very potent. Exactly, and I would say that all those teachers also had lots of fun because it's really interesting uh, creating something like this, and it just shows how much energy they put into it because they also want to transfer that to the classrooms. And as you said, they want to make it interesting for the students as well because that's what what that's what matters in the end, right? We need to teach students something, but we also want them to teach by experience and also to have fun while doing that. Uh, let's go to another question that we have received, and it is it is um, which are pedagogical benefits of integrating the modules in school curriculum? Who would like to answer to this one? Well, for my part. Uh... These are uh, project based um, and uh, we encourage scientific inquiry uh, by transforming the, their mobile phones into into a lab uh, like you. You get more a sense of that if you go through all the modules and we propose a challenge and some autonomous work uh, for the students. So. Uh, that uh, some of the competences we want to work uh, we want the students to work on while um, when going through while performing the modules. Um, so yeah, that's basic. Also getting to know top notch uh, research uh, that it's around them, of course, and uh, inspiring them to become scientists, hopefully. So. Yeah, I, I, and I would, you know, that's that's exactly the key, right? Um, it, they're very inspirational. Um, but at the same time, and you will be able to see if you download the extended modules as well, uh, we have mapped them to curriculum specifically. So they are now mapped to local curriculum. We could do that for other regions as well, if necessary or if required, um, so that you can actually see what competencies and what uh, skills you are mapping to the curriculum that are in the modules. And this is very relevant as well. But at the same time, as Bea was saying, they are a very potent tool to encourage um, you know, careers or vocations within the scientific uh, uh, domains. Exactly, and that also connects uh, to our next question, which is uh, the question asked by Ines Naya. Uh, can we use the modules on other students too, even if we don't get to participate in the challenge? As Albert said, those are just parts of the modules, so these are uh, prepared just for this competition, but you can feel free to go to the M, M schools uh, web page and also download the complete modules and explore them with your students. That's that's great. But also if you do have students from age uh, 9 to 14, feel free to participate in the competition. Uh, yeah. The next and, and let me just, yeah. just a quick quickly add to that, Ivana. Um, we know there are many teachers who have used modules and or or parts of the modules in different age groups and, and it's perfectly viable. Um, the reason we try to specify age groups to try to tailor them a little bit more towards the capacities and the needs of those students, but there's nothing that doesn't make them useful for other groups. They can be modified or even used as is um, to to, um, uh, to to explain all these topics to other ages, e even younger. I mean, not only older, but also younger uh, audiences. They work really well. Great. Uh, also, we have uh, another question, which is about the availability of the resources. 
are the resources free for teachers? Yes, they are. So if you go to M schools and uh, register, you can access many, many interesting modules that you can use in your classrooms. You can always, as uh, Albert said, use them even for the ages that you will see recommendations, but it can happen that you have more advanced class that you can use that with. Even sometimes you can have students that are eight or nine years old that can use the modules uh, prepared for the older ones because they are more advanced. So yes, all, all the material is completely free for you to use. So feel free to go and visit the M schools web page. And uh, another question is where can I find the extending modules? You can find them on M schools web page and we will just add a link in the chat box for that. Uh, also, we had a question. Uh, how did you adapt the modules for this competition? Bea, you have worked a lot on this. Can you tell us more? How um, how was it to adapt the module that was initially created to be longer, to be extend more extensive? to be just ready for this competition and what were your main aims when creating that? So when you told us, uh, when we decided what the contest what was going to look like, we, we, we very quickly decided that we, that the module had to be shorter because uh, you will have, I mean, the, the projects had to be feasible for you to, to work on them, adapt them, implement them on, the, on your classroom. So we very quickly decided we had to cut them. Uh, and so we chose specific parts from these two modules that uh, we knew could generate a, an activity that had a beginning and an end and a final product. Uh, and then we chose uh, these two parts um, of um, the graffiti in the nanoland and um, and the complex complexity of life that are the the modules that originated the the shorter ones the versions adapted for for the contest and so uh, I mean uh, since we chose the sessions that we needed in order to create a comprehensive activity and uh, and then we had to, to make uh, little changes uh, in order them, for them to be complete uh, as a full module, uh, even though they are part of a more extended module. So yeah, that's that's basically what we did uh, in the adaptation. Thank you very much for that. And what do you think? Are some of the modules more adapted for teachers who are, for example, chemistry teachers or biology teachers, especially when it comes to those when you have to use a microscope? Or do you think that all the teachers can equally participate in both modules with different age groups? Well, actually, we want to promote uh, teachers working from different back together that come from different backgrounds. So not only the biology teacher can work in in micro art, uh, but I mean, if you're not a biology teacher, I would uh, I I mean, you can work in micro art, but maybe collaborate with the biology teacher uh, to to um, develop the the project. Um, but yeah, basically what our main aim was to, to boost uh, collaboration within the school. Yeah, and that I, is amazing. I would, yeah, I just add to that. Um, sorry, Ivana, um, that um, the, the modules are intended for non experts in science to be able to use. So, um, you know, any teacher of any uh, different um, uh, uh, subject or expertise should be able to, with the instructions included in the module to be able to do almost everything that is laid out. Obviously, if you are a chemistry teacher and the module is related to chemistry, there may be many other things that you can add on to the module and do just because you have that knowledge. And that's what uh, Bea was hinting at is that it's, it's some of these modules can be really, really powerful if you bring in two or three different teachers to collaborate on a project and be able to add different dimensions to what those those children are studying or or understanding. Um, so, so that's very interesting and a very powerful tool to use as a, as a collaboration, as, as Bea was saying. But yeah, you should not feel afraid to explore because uh, they're intended to be very self-explanatory uh, and, and, and very useful to people who are not experts in a particular subject. Yeah, exactly. You will find many resources inside yeah. the modules. That you exactly. Can use. Exactly. So there are suggest suggested activities that in case you do not know how to implement it in your own way, you can follow. But again, if you do have some ideas how to change it, how to adapt it, 
feel free to use that. And as we have mentioned many, many times, the, the word collaboration, you can see how important it is. So in case you do collaborate with some of your colleagues from different subjects or teachers or families even and, and parents of your of your uh, students, please do mention you don't have to write the full name and last name, but say parents of my students were also involved in this or our community or our teachers from our schools. Uh, there is also one question regarding the prize. Uh, regarding the prize, can I choose any kind of training for my professional development? Well, what is really important and interesting about this competition is that you have the choice to pick something that you find relevant for yourself. So in case, for example, that you're lacking some IT skills, you can decide to go on IT Academy or to apply for some specific training. In case you feel that you would be more proficient if your language skills, for example, in English or French or whatever language you're interested in and ha has uh, connections with your uh, students and your school has uh, value, then you can pick that as well. Uh, we also uh, have one question on, do you have any recommendations on how to take the most out of the modules? But we have actually addressed this uh, many, many times because first of all, you can go and uh, sign a uh, register and be part of this competition. But if you want to explore more, you have the full modules that you can explore. Apart from these two modules, there are many other modules that uh, that are available on M schools platform. Bell, Bert, would you like to uh, to mention some other names of some other modules that you would maybe recommend to our viewers? Well, since we were talking about chemistry, there is. Uh, uh, I don't know if I remember the name, but. There's a, a very interesting one exploring the possibilities of analyzing light that I really, really, really like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a number of different modules that are very <laughs> interesting because as I as we said before, all of them are related to uh, science and, and scientific discoveries that are taking place, some of them now or some of them very recently. Um, I don't think there's a specific one that we would have to say this one is better or this one is worse. I mean, there's oh, modules yeah. related to the oceans. There's modules related to um, uh, conservation, um, you know, to, to, to biology, to chemistry. Um, all of them have, most of them have an art artistic component to them, so we can understand also how art is embedded into science and vice versa. Um, so I think you should just explore and see which ones you like best. I mean, this is something you can easily do on the website. Um, but maybe another tip I would give you, um, and maybe, I don't know if Bea wants to have some others, but um, if you really want to feel the excitement about this, is let the children explore and let them come up with ideas of what they would do with some of these experiments and some of these things, because it really, it really surprises every time we run these modules in classrooms or at events, um, the kids always come up with new ideas about what to do with the with the science, with the experiments, you know, with the art. Um, and, and as you see in the models we proposed here today, there's many different things, which as soon as this, the children start exploring, they're going to come up with ideas that you didn't think of. And they can be very, very powerful in transforming the content or, or having um, new new uses for it come up. So that would be sort of my tip is to, you know, give them the chance to explore. Um, make them feel very connected to this, let them have a lot of fun and, and, and new things will come out of that for sure. As an ex teacher, I can only say I wish I had the, the modules to work with my students back in the time <laughs> because it would really be a game changer for the classroom. It means a lot when you also as a teacher who has lots of work and a lot of lots of paperwork, you would agree uh, that you do have some steps already made, some procedures that you can follow and some tips where to find the material because that's something that can take a lot of time from the teacher. So it means a lot to have that all all gather together. Uh, let's see if we have some more questions. Uh, yes, there is one. Uh, if we do not have smartphones in our class, can we use the tablets instead? I believe the answer is yes, because we can get the same the same uh, result. But uh, would you say that there are any differences in the project when we are using tablet or mobile phone? There should not be any any drastic changes. No, not really. I mean, it, it, in fact, not at all. It's going to be the same. 
Um, even so, in some cases, we've had people doing some of these modules using Chromebooks or other type of um, devices um, that have cameras or that. Have, but obviously, the, the advantage of the smartphone or the tablet is that it has just so many sensors uh, in the device that are accessible and can be used with different apps or different services from the from the device itself. So that just adds value. But you know, for 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 many environments that are lower resources in the sense that they don't have certain devices. Um, you can still do a lot of this stuff and you don't really need to scale back too much on, on what is done. So I would encourage anyone with, you know, even uh, different devices to, to try to make it function because it does. Thank you. And you can see uh, their teachers in the in the teachers guides that uh, M schools has prepared. You have many, many resources, so you have resources that are really, really easily to to uh, prepare and to make. And there are so many good ideas that you can go through. So in case you have your own ideas, as we mentioned before, we are happy to hear them. Make sure that you add them uh, as part of your submission, which is a two step process. Just to remind you one more time. So first of all, you need to go and register to the M schools. You need to download and explore the modules. After that, integrate them in the classroom and keep track of what you're doing. Put all that in the PowerPoint presentation for which you can find the template on our web page and also in the chat box here and then submit it. When submitting, you will be able you will be able to upload your presentation and then we will go from there and select four winners who will get a voucher for 500 euros for the professional development. Uh, if uh, let me just see if we have some more questions. I believe that we have addressed all the questions, but uh, this is the last chance for all our viewers to ask something. Um, Bea or Albert. You'll probably remember Albert from Scientix TV. If you haven't uh, seen the, the episode of Scientix TV, we will share a link here in the chat box and you can uh, expect the new episode in um, 10 days from now. And you, we are also bringing some new interesting things. And before saying uh, goodbye and before saying thanks to all our speaker, to our speakers, Bea and Albert, and all your participants of this webinar, I would just like to remind you of another event European Schoolnet and Scientix are preparing for you, and that is the fourth Scientix conference, which will be uh, the registration for uh, which will be open very, very soon. So stay tuned. And um, Albert and Bea, uh, what else to say? But uh, it was a great pleasure for me being your host tonight. And many thanks for sharing more about M schools and many thanks for organizing this amazing competition. Thank you all and goodbye. <laughs>